this way? Would it be this way or could we switch it? Oh, we can switch it. So. All right, I'm gonna go talk for a second about something. I'm gonna talk to for a second. Okay. Hey, um, good job on the birthday, by the way. Good job. Appreciate it. So it's my 15 year old's birthday well, tomorrow. And we were just having a little party for him. We had cake and pizzas and he had a bunch of friends over. So they got, he got some video games. They're, they're getting ready to, um, <clears throat> getting ready to play him and, uh, hang out. But, um, uh, I wanted to talk today a little bit about um, the secret to getting the most out of your visit to an attorney. Okay, so the secret to getting the most out of your visit as an, to an attorney, because I meet with people all the time, really almost every day, at least every weekday, and you know I want to make sure they get the most out of their visit. I want to make sure you get the most out of your visit. So if you're going to see an estate planning or elder law attorney, what might you want to know? So number one, you would want to bring your estate planning documents with you that you have already. So um, that way, if it's me, I'm going to give it an honest assessment. I'm going to be looking kind of a checklist in my head that that I look at wills, I look at powers of attorneys, I look at all documents, trust, just to verify that they're written cor correctly, that they comply with statute, um, and that they absolutely are fine for the purposes for which they're written. And that way I don't have to guess. Or if we're looking to do some extra work and there's a power of attorney in place, uh, and we're looking at signing by power of attorney or, you know, using that power of attorney, then we want to make sure that, or I want to make sure I review it. I want a copy of it for my records. Uh, I want to make sure it's recorded at the register of deeds. So all those things are important. I want to be able to see it and, and go through it. So, so bring your estate planning documents that you have in place already. If there's a will, I want to make sure that everything's written correctly. I want to critique it. I want to, you know, make sure it still complies with your wishes um, versus when it may have been written 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, or more. I want to make sure it complies with North Carolina law as well. So bring the estate planning docs with you. Also to make it more efficient, it's great if you can fill out the client information sheets before getting to the office. I know our office actually emails a form that you can fill out straight from your email and submit and it goes straight into our electronic client information system. So that way I can look at what your asset structure is and it gives you a section to kind of give me a pregame or a, a preview of what we might be talking about so I can get in the right mindset. Or if I need to do any research prior to it, I'm gonna know what to do. Some people are wary, especially when they first meet me or we first start talking about giving me uh, financial information, or they're like, why do I need to give you, you know, what my retirement is or what, you know, our net worth is or what, you know, how many pieces of real estate we own, all that. Like, why are you asking me that? I, most people are forthcoming. Okay. But there's some people that are very reserved and it takes a little bit. And I let them know, Hey, I can't really tell you, um, what you, uh, you know, what, you might should do or diagnose your problems so we can come up with a solution if I don't know, you know, what your assets are, being an estate planning elder law attorney. So it's, you know, a plan might be extremely different for someone who has several million dollars plus long-term care insurance in place versus someone who has several hundred thousand dollars and no long-term care insurance in place. So the plan is going to be much different. Um, and, and each plan is extremely different, just, just as individualized and, and tailored. So I would say if you're not gener generally forthcoming or you're very guarded with information, just work on that prior to going to see a, a reputable estate planning and elder law attorney. 
because bringing that information to the appointment is going to be extremely helpful, okay? Um, I know with our clients, when, when they are potential clients, consults, when they sign up for a consult, we also, um, you know, you go into our e-newsletter system, which means you receive a few emails ahead of time. So doing your own research is not a bad thing going into the appointment. I actually love to meet with clients who already have a great idea of what they want. So getting an idea, even from your perspective, what you think you might want to do actually helps me. Now, you may or may not have the right notions of how to get there or what I think are the right notions of how to get there, but at least you, you come in with an idea of where you want to go. You may have done some research. You may have read, say, on our website or watched, say, the Elder Law TV um, tab on our website. You may, might have either read or studied or watched video to, to learn about what your issue or your problem is and potential solutions. I think that's a great thing. Reading the book Saving the Farm before you come to see me and being able to already have done some research on it is excellent because it allows us to get to the point quicker and accomplish, cover more ground in a shorter period of time. It just makes it more efficient. Um, and I'm dealing with someone who's already uh, knowledgeable, which is phenomenal, okay? Uh, but I would say with that, also go in with an open mind because, um, you may think you need a trust, for instance. And I tell people all the time that I talk more people out of trust than into trust. And I do a, a fair amount of trust drafting, both special needs trust, irrevocable trust, revocable living trust, Medicaid asset protection trust, and veterans asset protection trust. So, but most people who think they need a trust want to do so for probate avoidance or they perceive tax reasons that may or may not really be a reality for them right now. Or, um, you know, it just, it just depends. Or they're looking to lock up a ton of assets in a trust, but they have qualified assets that are, that are pre-tax funds like retirement funds, IRAs, 401ks, uh, you know, um, 403Bs, um, qualified annuities, those things, which won't fit into trust. So, so not, not the, the normal way you think of it. So, so, uh, you know, it's good to go in with an open mind as well. And I might be able to talk you into a cheaper, much more practical, more efficient solution. Okay. If you keep an open mind and, you know, I would equate it to this. When you go to the doctor, uh, you may have a good sense of what's wrong, but it's a good idea to leave the diagnosis and the treatment in the doctor's hands. Although you want to be a very informed patient and a very assertive patient. I love very assertive and informed clients, uh, but I also want you, you to keep an open mind because I do this every day for a living. So, so those are some of my tips for getting the most out of your attorney visit, okay? Um, keep an open mind, but do your research. Go in with some idea of what you might want and do some reading about it. You know, Google is a great source for that. Other websites, I put out a lot of content. Go to mcelderlaw.com on any estate planning or elder law issue. Most of them I've written or you know, blogged or written a book on or, or, or done a video on, um, and all that content resides there. Sign up for our e-newsletter. We'll send that to you regularly uh, so you'll get a good idea of uh, you know, different estate planning issues. Fill out the client information sheet ahead of time and be willing to be forthcoming uh, so that the attorney that you're meeting with can get a good grasp, quick, gra quick grasp on the situation, okay? So those are my quick tips on getting the most out of your hour or so with an attorney for your initial consult. If you have any questions, give us a call, 704-259-7040, or visit us online at mcelderlaw.com. Thanks. Have a great day. Peace.